Have you ever asked yourself, are rosés just for summer? This is a question that I get asked all the time and exactly what we are going to cover today on Tasty Tidbits with Tiff. As you hop on, I would love for you to say hi in the comments and where you are watching from. If you're joining us later for the replay, just add in hashtag replay. My name is Tiffany and I am so excited you're here. I help busy millennials who feel overwhelmed in the kitchen learn new skills to create quick, healthy recipes with wine pairing. Follow me on social media for daily tips, tricks, recipes, and inspiration. And if you have a wine drinking friend, be sure to tag them in the comments or share this video with them so they don't miss out. In today's video, we are going to cover the common question, are rosés just for summer? But that's not all. I also have a super simple strategy to help you elevate your taste buds at your next wine tasting event, so be sure to stick around until the end. If you're ready to take care of that right now and you want to claim your copy of my free food and wine pairing guide, drop wine in the comments. Let's get started. Now, rosés are delicious and one of my personal favorites on a hot summer day. But what many people don't realize is that rosés are just as versatile as all of the other wine varieties out there. And it's their versatility that make them perfect for food pairing. Another thing people generally don't think of when it comes to rosés. Now, for some reason, many people think that rosés are only a summer wine. So many think that in fact, that most sales plummet greatly from September to April. People aren't enjoying them in the fall, winter, and spring. When in reality, rosés are the perfect wine, especially when it comes to brunches and family gatherings and holidays. So, Who's up for changing that this year? If you are ready to make that change and enjoy rosés all year long, I want you to drop a four in the comments. And if you're curious, I'm about to tell you why you should give rosés a try outside the summer season. Now, rosés, like other wines, have a very versatile palate when it comes to dry, in the middle or sweet and fruity. So when you find yourself with a dry rosé, these are going to have similar flavors to a Pinot Grigio, which my white wine drinkers are fairly familiar with. This is one of the most common white wine varieties out there. And if you love your white wine, drop Team White in the comments. So these dry rosés are going to pair well with some seafood, some salads, whether it's lettuce or pasta based, as well as goat cheese for those of you that are making charcuterie boards. Now a medium bodied rosé is going to be similar to a Zinfandel. In fact, you can find pink Zinfandels with the characteristics of a rosé at most liquor stores. So these medium bodied rosés are going to go well with barbecue, baked ham, and berry desserts. Now these medium bodied rosés are one of my personal favorites when it comes to Thanksgiving, Christmas, Easter, all of those family holidays that fall from now until April because you typically see a baked ham on the table. And rosés, that medium bodied rosé with a baked ham is one of the best pairing combinations. Highly recommend you give it a try next time you are making ham for dinner. Now, rosés also come very sweet and fruity, and these are going to be very similar to a Pinot Noir for my red wine drinkers. And even if you are team white, I highly recommend you give a Pinot Noir a try. You may just be surprised that you actually like red wine. If you already love a Pinot Noir, if you're on Team Red, drop Team Red in the comments. Now these fruity rosés are going to pair well with a seared salmon, wild game, 
spicy cuisine and grilled fruit. And you can also find rosés in sparkling form. So these sparkling rosés, just like a champagne or a prosecco, are perfect for pairing with baked goods, such as cakes, muffins, fruit tarts, and other buttery deliciousness. Sparkling rosés are also a great option to mix with your fruit juice for a mimosa bar. Now, before we jump in to some basic wine pairing tips to help you elevate your taste buds, I want to hear from you. Are you team red or team white? Drop your vote in the comments, or maybe because of the amazing versatility, I just converted you over to team rosé. That's the case. Drop rosé in the comments. Let's see which team is most present today. Now, when it comes to wine and food pairing, the first tip to remember as a general rule is that red matches red and white matches white. So in general, red wine is going to pair best with your red meats and red tomato based sauces, whereas white wine is going to pair better with your white meats and cream garlic cheese based sauces. This is not always the case. And that leads us to tip number two which is to consider your sides and seasonings. When it comes to wine pairing, you want to look at the meal as a whole, not just the main course or just the side dishes or just the dessert. Look at it all together. For example, if you are grilling a steak and serving that with some homemade bruschetta, you will want to stick with a red wine just as if you were doing the steak on its own. A uh, Cabernet Sauvignon or a Syrah is going to be your best option for that combination. However, if you find yourself grilling a steak and serving that with garlic mashed potatoes and honey roasted carrots, a dry red wine or even a semi-sweet red wine is not going to be your best option. Instead, you will want a crisper white wine or a lighter red, such as a Zinfandel or Pinot Noir, to still blend nicely with that steak, but also accent the flavors of the garlic mashed potatoes and the honey roasted carrots. That is going to bring everything together. And tip number three, sweet likes heat. When it comes to spicy dishes, especially Mexican cuisine, Indian food, Asian food, and curry, you want a sweet wine to counteract the spiciness it's even gonna cut back on the spiciness. So even those of you that do not like spicy food, having those jalapenos or curry with a glass of sweet wine is going to make the spicy food not so spicy and actually enjoyable. Now on the other hand, if you want to enhance the spice and turn yourself into a fire breathing dragon, then grab yourself some dry wine and it will do just that. But remember, I warned you. Now if you're ready to keep that going and become the food and wine pairing guru in your social circle, drop wine in the comments and I will hook you up with my free food and wine pairing guide so you can start doing that right away today.